Tonight, Dublin's City West Hotel plays host to the Oscars of Irish Business. 24 finalists and their families and friends have gathered for this glittering event. But only one can become the EY Entrepreneur of the Year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hosts for the evening, Miriam O'Callaghan and Mark Little. Good evening and welcome to the 2013 EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. A chance to celebrate and to take pride in the very best of Irish business. And a chance to catch up with old friends. Thanks Miriam. It's like we've never been apart. <laughs> of course, since we were last on the same team, it's been a really testing couple of years for our country. But if we are trying to build a better world for ourselves, our families, our communities, then some of the foundations are in this room tonight. And we're here to acknowledge their inspiration and their success. And there are 24 nominees here tonight, but if it was all just about them, there'd only be 24 people in this room, and there's a lot more than that. It's much bigger than that. Being single-minded doesn't have to be solitary. Tonight is as much about the employees, the families, the communities, who depend on these entrepreneurs and who support them too. That said, we don't have one for everyone in the audience. We have awards in three categories to hand out tonight. Emerging, industry, and international. And of course, one of those category winners will be handed the accolade of overall Entrepreneur of the Year. For tonight's celebration, we are very pleased to welcome Mike McCurr, managing partner of EY, the Taunashta and Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, Eamon Gilmore, and the Minister for Jobs, Enterprise, and Innovation, Richard Bruton. Well, our first award of the night focuses on the eight ingenious nominees in the emerging category. Kilkenny's Janie Gulquintig is the design entrepreneur behind Sugru, an innovative self-setting rubber which is fixing stuff in 140 countries. Her company now employs 45 people. I'm not sure that there's a recipe for being an entrepreneur. Nobody's there to tell you what to do, right? That's it. So you need to have a vision for where you want to get to, and then you need to be patient and persistent, and if you keep getting pushed back, to keep going back and like just kind of keep going. Morris Curran and Kieran Fitzpatrick are co-founders of Barracuda FX. They design foreign exchange trading software for many of the world's leading banks. We started in a recession, an interesting time to start a financial software company. When you, you start to grow and, and you have some successes and you start to you know, feel comfortable in that, you, know, you realise that really it is what you want to do. You've got to do your own thing and believe in your own convictions. There are always people out there who tell you otherwise. You've got to believe in your own instinct. You're on this planet for a very short time, you know, make it count. Corkham and Sean Sheehan set up WiseTech to provide environmentally friendly recycling of used computer parts. The enterprise now employs 200 people at locations in Ireland, Thailand and the US. I'm not afraid to take chances and you know, if I fail I get back up again and that helps you stay in front. We've experienced a lot of growth but a lot of it is to the credit of the team in WiseTech. So they've worked very hard, we've continually exceeded our customer expectations and you know, to be recognised for that is absolutely incredible. Ray Smith and Connor Murphy are co-founders of DataHug. With offices in New York, San Francisco, London and Dublin, their software automatically detects who knows who in an organisation, enabling new connections with customers. I've always had a vivid vision and imagination. So I think that is probably my realisation what an entrepreneur is. It allows you to act on that vision. That just fuels more and more visions, which is, which is a problem in itself. But um, to have the opportunity to do that is absolutely brilliant. Our number one thing around building a successful company was attracting top talent, you know, building a team, but not just within an organization, but someone that were actually inspired by what you were, in the example you were setting. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a real dream come true for me. Well, as you can see there, for Ray and Connor, just being nominated tonight is a real dream come true. Let's see how our remaining four nominees turned their dreams into business reality. Simon Cole and Mark Godfrey set up automated intelligence in Belfast in 2010. 
Their software helps large organisations to cost-effectively store and access the mountains of data created by their business. We deal with very large organisations, we deal with very sensitive data and we're a very small company so there's a natural risk profile that we've got to overcome there and it's talent and expertise and energy that will get you through those barriers. We're small, we're from a small country but we've taken on some of the biggest companies in the world in terms of our, our space and uh, we, we've left them for dead. Um, now we just need to do that much bigger. Belfast man Colin Williams has certainly been pulling on the strings of success Puppet shows produced at 16 South have been broadcast in over 100 countries and the company is currently producing its first full animation series. 16 South is a creative business and I, I very much see that, that as two sides, so the creative and the business. It, you've got to get both right because there's no point in being wonderful if you can't pay the bills. So for, for a creative business to win is fantastic because it really, it really gives credibility to what we do. Brothers Carol and Paul Burke are the founders of London-based Merit Software. They help financial institutions to manage and monitor transactions and their clients include seven of the world's top ten investment banks. We were initially told that the actual, the particular product, that there wasn't a market for it. We went ahead anyway. Some people might say that's foolhardiness, but um, anyway, it has actually worked out. There doesn't seem to be any end in sight to the possibilities you know, for, for the company. A serial entrepreneur from Limerick, Eleanor McAvoy's latest venture is Budget Energy. An electricity retailer, it purchases power from the Northern Ireland grid and sells it on to over 40,000 consumers. I think back when I was in my 20s and the mistake I made was I thought other people had to validate me in terms of my abilities. But now I realise that if you want validation, you look inwards. And if I had known that 20 years ago, I'd probably be on business number six. I'm competitive and I take it to the last. And if I don't win, I immediately forget it. Never remember the things that went wrong only focus on the victories. Isn't that such good advice for business and life from Eleanor? Don't dwell on what goes wrong, just focus on those little victories. Well, to announce who's about to claim a big victory in the emerging category, please welcome two former winners of this competition, judging panel members, Jerry Canelli and Anne Herity. This evening's emerging entrepreneurs are like magicians, plucking brand new ideas and undiscovered markets out of seemingly thin air. The 2013 Emerging Entrepreneur of the Year is... Kieran Fitzpatrick and Morris Curran. In Barracuda FX, Morris Curran and Kieran Fitzpatrick have created a business that strikes fear in its global competitors, building best-in-class technology and backing it up with unrivaled expertise has made them indispensable to their blue chip customers. The sky really is the limit for the 2013 Emerging Entrepreneurs of the Year. Completely shocked, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank the judges, um, Porrick and Jerry and all the judges. A very fair process. We felt that we got everyone was ran with integrity. To Ernst and Young, brilliant, brilliant experience. Really enjoyed it, all things considered. <laughs> to the um, to the other competitors, thank you so much for a wonderful experience. We're all winners here tonight, and thank you so much for everything that we experienced. On behalf of uh, Barracuda, I'd like to thank our customers because without them it wouldn't be possible. And similarly, without our management team, and particularly our wives and families, Orla, Rory, Sharon, Roshin, Sorkin, and Senan, this wouldn't be possible without any of your help. Thanks very much, guys. Congratulations to the first of tonight's three category winners. And of course, one of those category winners will become this year's overall Entrepreneur of the Year and go forward to represent Ireland 
at the World Awards. Well, last year, that honour fell to Ed Harty of Kerry-based Dairy Master. In June, he left the cattle and the milking machines in very good hands when he flew out to represent Ireland in Monte Carlo. Being here in Monte Carlo is absolutely fantastic altogether. And to be able to come along and, and fly the flag for Ireland, fly the flag for Dairy Master on the world stage and talk about agriculture, uh, talk to people like Kofi Annan about it, um, has, been, has been huge, you know. It's far from a holiday, you know. It's, uh, it's work, work, work. There's been uh, lots of media interviews, lots of TV. Then there's been uh, meeting other country winners, and that has been fantastic as well. And there's connections being set up that you would have never envisaged coming out here. Ed's story is quite fantastic. It's back to the basics of agri-food, but with a technology twist. So he's building a network and a peer group that is truly global. He can open doors for them, and they can open doors for him. The whole idea of this program has never been more relevant than today when we really need these inspirational stories to encourage people that actually going off and taking a risk, starting a business and having that real will to win and determination to succeed is something that we certainly need in Ireland in order to drive our recovery. After three jam-packed days of exceptional seminars and networking opportunities, the awards climaxes with a glittering ceremony on the Saturday night. 2013 Ernst & Young World Entrepreneur of the Year is how many yogurt? Top prize went to a stunning US yogurt company with sales approaching a billion dollars. The ambition of our own Ed Harty left a deep impression on the World Awards and the World Awards left Ed with a sense of pride and confidence. It was a huge privilege to be here. You see all these, these 49 uh, amazing businesses and amazing companies from around the world, uh, but in Ireland, uh, we're absolutely every bit as good as each one of those. Uh, we need to go out, uh, tell our story, sell our story, uh, show our impact on the world, and probably um, uh, let the world know what, what Ireland is about. And what a great a storyteller Ed Harty is. And I think the winners from previous years, they continue to do us proud around the globe and here at home. Now come back to us after the break when we'll turn the spotlight onto this year's recipient of the Industry and International Awards. <laughs>